name is Stacy Trelawney, and today I want to talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart. It's about empowering yourself and not letting your illness, your disorder, any type of illness that you might deal with on a daily basis, a disease, whatever your struggle is in life. Today I want to talk to you about empowering yourself and not letting your illness empower you. Now at age five, I had, my parents were in the other bedroom and they heard a, a noise. It's, my mother said it sounded like a gargling sound, like, like I was choking on my own spit. So she walked into my bedroom to check on me. And at age five, she found me in my bed with my lips turning blue and a grand mal seizure. Previously, I was diagnosed with an ear infection and I had a cold, you know, possibly, the doctor said it might be a, a little bit, you know, a chronic cold. And she had called the police and the ambulance and they came, they rushed me to the hospital and I was induced in a four day coma. During those four days, they told my parents that they weren't sure if I was going to come out of this coma. And if I did, they said I might be paraplegic or have severe brain damage. Well, my father was from another country and he'd been here for a very long time, but he, was, he grew up on the island of Chios. And in that small island of Greece, they had a church in their town. And that church had a statue and water used to fall from the statue's eyes. He closed his eyes and he prayed to that statue. And, but he prayed that I would be okay. And he said when he opened his eyes, tears ran down my eyes. And the first thing I asked for, believe it or not, after being in a four day coma, was McDonald's french fries. I wasn't paraplegic and I did not have any type of brain damage. But through many tests, they said I had encephalitis. It was a virus that had traveled to the brain and it went throughout my entire brain during those four days that I was in a coma and it had caused scar tissue damage in my brain. And to this day, they cannot find the scar tissue damage in my brain, but it left me with a disorder called epilepsy. Now this disorder, I struggled with my entire life. It's been a roller coaster ride for me from that moment that I, I had my first seizure. I struggled in school when I was young Epilepsy was really not talked about. Everything was kept hush hush. And they didn't know a lot about it either. There was only two medications in the uh, market for epilepsy that they were using at the, at the time. It was phenobarbital and Dilatin. And they had me on phenobarbital. And I was controlled for a while. And I was also treated a little bit differently from the teachers because of my disorder. And as I got older and I went through my changes and I started to menstruate, my hormones started to change, my body started to change, my seizures came about again. And I started taking seizures. And I struggled and struggled and struggled going from doctor to doctor to doctor, taking every test possible to try to find a way to control me, trying different drugs some drugs made me so comatose, I felt like a zombie. Some of them slowed down my speech. And I felt, I didn't even, I didn't even feel like a human being. I, I felt, I, I don't even know what the words would be. You know, I, I just, I, I did not feel quote unquote normal. You know, I, I got to college. I, I wasn't even sure if I was gonna be able to finish college. Even though I got good grades in school, 
the stresses of college, the late night studying, the demands of reports, the researching, everything that involves when you go to college, I started having even more seizures. And then one day I said, you know what? I can't give up. I cannot give up. I am not going to let this illness rule my life. Why do I have to be different? I always, my entire life felt different. I tried to hide it. I tried to be in denial. If, if the doctor said go left, I'd purposely go right to say, you know what? I could do it. Don't tell me what I can, can and cannot do. Now that might not have been the smartest attitude to have, but it was the attitude I had back then. So when I was struggling in school, I was so upset because I didn't know if I was going to be able to finish it because the stresses of school and the seizures just overtook took my life. It was so many seizures. I still remember one day I had a seizure in class and I fell to the floor and I woke up and the entire room was in silence, all eyes on me. And what an uncomfortable feeling to have. Me personally, I don't like being the center of attention and especially not the center of attention for my illness. Even the kid in class that sat across from me that I couldn't stand, we'd purposely give each other dirty looks, you know, just to let them know that you get on my nerves. He was looking at me with a look of sympathy. I said, oh my God, what am I going to do? So that day I wrote a letter to the Epilepsy Foundation and I asked them to please post this letter in their magazine. The Epilepsy Foundation has a magazine for epilepsy and epilepsy patients and caregivers to help them. So they posted my article and in that article, I asked people, how do you cope with epilepsy? How do you get through life when you are constantly taking seizures, when you are constantly in the fear of having one? Anything can trigger it, just like any other disease or disorder. There's rules, there's limits, there's certain ways you have to live, there's certain pains you have to endure. You feel at some point like you don't have control of your life. Your illness has control over you and you lose the power. You lose the will. That positive energy goes away and every day is a struggle. Well, surprisingly, I got three to 400 letters from all over the United States and Canada from people with epilepsy telling me their stories, telling me how they cope with epilepsy, how they get through life. And for the first time in my life, I felt like I wasn't alone. There are other people in this world with my illness, just like everybody who has an illness. You are not alone. You have other people in this world that are going through just what you are going through. And you probably think to yourself, oh, they don't understand. They don't know what I'm going through. But trust me, when I got all those letters, I read every single one of them. They knew what I was going through. We were going through it together. And, oh my God, it, I learned from these people. I started to understand. I took everything that these people gave me, all the useful tools and techniques, what they did so they could survive in this world with an illness. And I applied it to my life and it helped me. I was so inspired that I had started writing a book in college, using, putting these letters together and so other people could read them and get what I got out of them. And then as time went on, I put it aside because I was still in school and I didn't have the time to finish it. And I graduated college 
And then I got into the big working world and I was so excited. I was like, yeah, I did it. I graduated. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to live a normal life. Life is going to be great. Well, I did. I got a job from one of the biggest corporations in the city. And I was working and I was living the life. And then one day I was walking in the hall and I felt a seizure coming on. I got an aura, what they call it. And you get a pre-sensation and you kind of know that you're going to have the seizure. And I fell to the ground. I was still conscious, but I was kind of frozen while I took the seizure. My eyes were open and I saw this producer walk right over me. He stepped over me while I was having the seizure and kept walking. And I said, oh my God, I just have, I'm in a seizure and he just walked right over me like I didn't even exist. He didn't even reach his hand out to help me. Well, you want to talk about feeling alone? At that moment, I felt alone. But I didn't let it get it down. And then all of a sudden, 30 minutes later, his associate came over and said, well, Stacy, I'm sorry, but you don't feel the, the qualifications, so we're gonna have to let you go. Well, I knew that I fit the qualifications because I did a pretty damn good job there. But my epilepsy, well, and I knew that was the reason why they were letting me go. So I left that day with my head up high and I said, screw you, I'm gonna show you one day. So I started working on my book. I, started, I got another job. I started getting ready because my husband was coming out of school and we were gonna get married. And I started, I finished that book eventually. And uh, I had, um, it became a bestseller. And people, I didn't realize at first how much words had an impact on people's lives until one day I got an email and it said, I was on the verge of suicide. I felt I was in a motorcycle accident. I was the head of the household. I did everything. And then one day I got into this accident and I hit my head and I developed epilepsy and I lost everything. My job, my car, my license, my this, my that. And I felt like I was useless. And he said, I read your book and I read your regiments and I did what you said was helpful. And you gave me hope, you gave me, you inspired me that if you could do it, I could do it. And the only reason I knew I could do it was because other people reached out to me and inspired me and empowered me. And I realized at that moment that, you know what? If I just help someone with an epilepsy disorder, just by the words I put on a piece of paper, and I could help millions of people with millions of illnesses and disorders. And that, I realized then, was my true calling. And then I realized maybe everything happens for a reason. So I changed my outlook and I applied different methods on how I live my life, my mentality of how I thought, my lifestyle, my eating habits, everything. And today, I can happily say, I am seizure free. I am living the life that I wanted to live. And I am now helping others get to this point. And I want to help you. So I don't want you to give up. Now, this is not a message just for epilepsy. This is a message for anybody with any disease, illness, disorder. Don't let an illness, a disease, a disorder, a health condition, or anything 
Stop you from being the person you want to be. Because if you have a dream and you have goals, those dreams will come true. Let me show you how to make those dreams come true. Because I want to give back. It's my turn now to give back what others gave me. The chances others gave me, I want to give to you. So today, I'm asking you to follow me and listen to my videos because I am going to change the way you process things. And I am going to help you get through the chronic illness that you're going through. Because yes, my illness doesn't go away. I have to live with it the rest of my life. I'm never going to get rid of my epilepsy. But with the right mentality and the right way of looking at life and doing the right things that I need to do for myself by understanding my mind, my body, and my spirit, I can overcome my illness. And I could be the one in power. Don't let your illness empower you. Empower yourself and be the person you've dreamed of.